Hi, and welcome back to Apple Cottage. This is Sandy. So it's gardening together Tuesday morning. It's New Year's Eve. And I thought, let's have some fun today. So let's talk about houseplants. As you can see, I live in a jungle. These are just a few of my houseplants. But I thought I would show you some. We'll talk about some houseplants, why we should have houseplants, what to do, how to water, things like that. And I thought it would just be fun. So grab your cup of tea and let's get started. Well, my number one reason to have houseplants is because I like to live in a jungle. I love green around me. I love everything about plants. It makes me happy. And in the cold winter months in Wyoming, having houseplants can just be spectacular. Now, houseplants live all year round, for the most part. Depends on if, you know, there's a few that are bulbs. So like right here, this is actually a saffron plant. And after it gets done flowering, they start to flop all over the place. So I just tie them in knots. And I let them sit in the sunny window, window until um, the um, foliage all dies back. And then I won't get saffron again until next year. So this is what it looks like before I start to tie them in a knot. And they just sit on my windowsills. And, but after a while, they wanna be flopping all over the place. And so they're real bendable. So I just tie them in a knot and it's not flopping all over. I still water them. Um, even when they turn all the way brown, I'll do a water regimen maybe once a month, just so they don't completely dry out. I've had these for a few years. I'll insert some pictures in part of the video so you can see what the flowers look like when they were um, blooming. And the saffron, the little stigmas in there, the red, that's what you save and that's what you cook with. And I just wasn't willing to pay what they wanted for prices in the stores. And so I thought, I'll just grow my own. Um, another thing about house plants or plants in general is that you can bring a lot of your outside plants that you have outside all summer inside so that you can enjoy them and you're not replacing them year, year after year. So um, the other thing that I think it really does, especially if you live in a climate like we do and it's very cold um, and can be somewhat gloomy sometimes, is that I think it really helps to battle those blues. And so I really appreciate plants that way. Um, if you're a person that really needs the sun, um, having house plants can be just an excellent way. And, and really they add oxygen into um, the air, which is a great benefit. Um, plants can purify the air. Now, if you just had one little plant in your house, though it is purifying a little bit of air, it's really not going to purify your, your house or your apartment. They say about one large plant for every hundred square feet. So I would say on an average house, you'd probably need 15 or 18 plants to really help purify that air, but they do a great job at it. So it's a great addition to um, your house. Now, for me personally, I find that it, house plants boost um, my productivity, my creativity, um, my concentration. And there's actually studies out there because scientists do studies on everything. And they do studies and they agree with me, which um, I, I have known for a really long time that they just help me. I'm looking around, I'm seeing my plants, and I think it just really stimulates and um, gets me motivated. The other thing that it, house plants do is that they add humidity into the air. In Wyoming, where I live, it is extremely dry. Um, in the summertime when we have some, you know, lots of rains, it can feel humid, um, humid out, but really we have dry air. And so a lot of people run humidifiers. Um, they do different things. I have houseplants 
and it can really be a benefit to you. Now, probably one of the most oxygen producing plants that you can have for a house plant is this right here. This one is called a snake plant. There's actually five plants in this one. I should really repot it. They're like a, like a succulent. They're thick and they're strong. You can't hardly kill them. And you can reproduce them so easily. You're just going to cut off one of these long stalks, cut it apart about every two inches and let it sit out just to, to dry for two or three days. Then you can just stick it in your potting soil and it will root itself. It is so easy and just an amazing plant. And I've had this for a long time and I just have really enjoyed it. It's just tough. Sometimes I take it outside in the summertime. Um, sometimes I leave it in the house all the whole time. Now, when you have plants, sometimes you're going to have bugs. That's all there is to it. Probably the most common um, houseplant bugs are aphids, white fly, scale, mealybugs, gnats, spider mites. You might get a combination of them or you might never have um, problems with bugs. But we buy our houseplants from greenhouses and stores and um, they ship them in from other countries. And so the likelihood that sometime you're gonna have bugs it's pretty high. The, probably the, the one I have seen the most or heard people complain about the most are gnats. Now gnats are little tiny flies actually. They're in the same family as a fly and same family as a mosquito. So if you understand your bugs, it helps you understand how to get rid of them. So anything that would get rid of a mosquito would get rid of a gnat. So I buy, I go to the Weed and Pest and they have these little black solid things that you would just dump into a pond and it would make it so that when a mosquito laid its eggs, they would never um, become mosquitoes. They would kill them. So this same idea would work with a gnat. So what I do is I just take one of these and I put it in my spray water bottle. I do it about a day before I'm going to spray. If I know I have noticed gnats and I'll just spray it. And because if it kills a mosquito, it will kill a gnat. Now gnats there, there's some easy ways to get rid of them. Um, you could just put them in the shower spray it all off so that you're catching some of them that are just on the plant. Probably the easiest way to do it is um, just reduce your watering for a little while and that will really reduce the gnats. Um, you can also do a spray of soap and water. A lot of people use Dawn but I've really found that um, palm olive um, dish soap works better and so you're just putting a couple dots in there, um, drops into your spray bottle with water, mix it up a little bit and spray and make sure you're spraying under the leaves. You're spraying on the soil and that will make it so that um, it will kill the gnats. It'll also kill other things. It'll kill aphids, spider mites, um, mealybugs sometimes. Now, when you have like scale and I'm going to post pictures of all these different common insects so that, that perhaps you have a bug and you don't really know what it is. And so I'm going to just show you what they look like. So when you're looking and when I show the picture, I'll write on there what you should do to get rid of them. So like scale, once in a while I've had scale on um, a lemon or lime tree and I really just take my fingernail and I just take it off and throw it out. But you can put like a cotton ball and put some rubbing alcohol on it and wipe it off. It will kill it too. Um, you could use the soap to spray on there or a horticulture oil. Just be careful when you're using any kind of horticulture oil that um, 
you put it on the top and the bottom, but you'd be real careful that you're not damaging the leaves in any way. And some horticultural oils can be a little powerful. So I would test it on a leaf or two before I put it over my entire plant. But the rubbing alcohol works really well and it doesn't seem to hurt the plant. You know, you're just rubbing it where the scale is takes, and they, it takes it right off. And then you can dispose of those. Um, the, if you had white fly, and they're just these little tiny white flies, they make um, a yellow sticky card that you can hang above your plant and they're attracted to it and they'll go and they get stuck on there. Um, a lot of plants, if they have bugs, they're in pots anyway, just take them over to your, your shower and spray the top and then the underneath and um, just let them sit in there while they drain so, because they'll probably get a lot of water into the soil. And that can really get rid of your, your bug problem. Now, I'm gonna show you um, a couple of my plants that I just have loved. So I'm gonna move the saffron away because we already talked about that. Now, as you know, I love amaryllises. And did I need another amaryllis? No, I already have like 40 of them. But I was in Walmart and they had this amaryllis and it was white. The box said that it was going to be a white one and i love white amaryllises and they were five dollars now they're on sale even cheaper but look at this two flower buds coming up besides the leaves so this one is going to be spectacular so that's very exciting this one i bought last summer um no i take it back i bought it the summer before and it was like two inches tall and look at the growth on this. Now, this is a broken one off of one of the other ones, but see how it's making a little root? So I am gonna break that a little bit more and I'm gonna plant this. So I'll have another jade plant. And jades, they'll just keep growing and growing. They can get six, eight, 10 feet tall. They're a beautiful plant. I love succulents anyway. and. Succulents are very easy to reproduce. If I wanted to make some more of these jade plants, I could just break this off and then I'm just gonna let it sit for a day or two so that where I broke it becomes a little bit of a callus. And sometimes I do, all I do is set it right on the soil. I don't, and I just leave it there. And all of a sudden roots will start to come out of this end and I can plant it. So that makes it very exciting. If you wanted to grow a plant and you needed the easiest plant to grow ever, you would want a philodendrium. If any site that you look at, it's gonna tell you this is the easiest plant to grow. And they'll trail 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet and my grandmother had one for probably 20 years, then my mother got it, then I got it. It's crazy how long they'll live. If you ever see these in Hawaii, the leaves are so large because they grow outside. They have so much humidity, it's just fantastic. But once it starts to root, instead of just letting it trail down, what I will do is I'll just wrap it around and pin it down and so it's touching the soil I'll just use some bobby pins and it will root along there and I'll get a bigger, stronger plant. But I'm just gonna cut this at, at an angle. And this is so long, I'm actually gonna cut it twice. And I'm gonna cut right above this node at an angle. I'm gonna break this little leaf off. 
and I'm just gonna set it in the water. Now this one has two leaves, so I'm gonna break one of those leaves off and I'm gonna set that in the water. And it won't be long and that will root for me. Now this is a very fun project. If you like African violets, you can cut a leaf off. Um, you can put it in something that you have a bag over top of it. Um, the soil is already um, moistened when, you, when I stick it in there. I'll put a little pencil so that I can just stick it right in there. I didn't use any rooting hormone or anything. Now it's in this little snow globe. At, just before Christmas time, the dollar store was selling snow globes and we had a master gardener class and we did these and I'm gonna put it right up there. Can you see all those little babies growing in there? Now, we did this in November and I have not opened this or watered this or anything. It's just all this humidity. See how the, it's all humid in there? That has made this grow. And I'll keep this in here until the big leaf the mama plant, the mama leaf actually, it's not really a plant though, it rooted itself, um, starts to die back and then I'll put this in a larger pot. But right now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little baby leaves coming out of it. It's just so exciting. And this is a fun project because kids love snow globes anyway. And so um, it's, it's fun to, to try new things. And I've never um, propagated African violets in this way. So that's very exciting. Now this one, this is a pine cone. It's in some dirt. And it has seeds in there. The pine cone actually has seeds. And so I saw this on Facebook and then pretty soon you had little trees coming out. So. We will see if this works. I don't know. If you like guacamole, perhaps you like um, just eating avocados. And so I have an avocado seed in here. I've actually had it since the first part of December in here. This is just some saran wrap. And it's been in there with a wet paper towel. I have actually changed the paper towel a couple times. I'm gonna put that back in there. But can you see? It's starting to split. So pretty soon I'm gonna have an avocado, avocado coming out of there. And right in here, I have one little thing that's starting to root. And so it's very exciting. So I just keep it on that wet paper towel. I put the saran wrap on top and it's just been sitting on my refrigerator. So that's, it's kind of fun. Um, I've tried it the other way when you stick the toothpicks in there and it's sitting on water, the very bottom, bottom of it is touching the water. But I had watched a video and they did it this way and I just thought I'm gonna try it. So that's really fun. And then there's just some of the other plants. I actually am gonna, add some other um, little snapshots, some photos of some of the other plants, but some of them were way too big. I couldn't move them over here. But here's one of my new, this is called a red banana elephant ear. So I have that with a light on it, a grow light. And I found that since I put the grow light on it, the stems have gotten much darker so, because it's called a red banana one. And it's been producing bigger leaves, it's sending up another leaf right here, right over here. And so I'm gonna leave it in this pot that it's in right now, probably until um, a little closer to springtime. And then I'll take it out and I'll repot it. I, I give it fertilizer. And, and perhaps we should talk about that. Now, when I um, water my plants, I try to give them a little bit of fertilizer. You know, I love fish emulsion. 
um, or any really any organic kind of liquid fertilizer I like. And so I try to give them the fertilizer about every other time. I like my plants to not completely dry out, especially in the winter time. Um, but the first inch at least be dry. And then I'll add um, water, not water out of my tap, but um, rainwater, um, spring water. But water out of your tap can have just so much chlorine in it and all that other crap. I mean, I fear if I don't drink it, why would I give it to my plants? Seriously, you know? So, but about every other week, I give it a little fertilizer, all of them. And they seem to like it. Now, if you have a lemon or a lime tree or a citrus tree, you, every, every time you water it, you should probably give it a little bit. Really dilute it, but just a little bit, because they are just heavy feeders. Now, when it comes in the summertime and you have them outside, for sure, every single week, you gotta give them a fertilizer. But there are like some of my succulents, like this one or this one right here. Um, I really let that, the soil get pretty dry on that. And do I, I fertilize it once in a while, but they're succulents. And so I don't fertilize them like I do some of the other plants. So that I want them, I want them to be moist when I water them. I don't want them to ever be soggy. And so you kind of get to know your plants and you get to know um, by how the leaves droop or they're upright um, so that you get to know when to water and when not to water. But it's an easy schedule for me to go all through the house and water, say every week, week and a half in the winter time. In the summertime, when those plants are really getting a lot of sun, I'm watering them every day or every other day, just like I am outside, just because the intensity of the sun, and it's just hot in my house. We don't run an air conditioner. Um, we ran some fans. So they use a lot of water. But houseplants are just really a lovely thing to have. And this one right here, this year, this winter, I'm actually gonna cut off every one of these branches and root them. I'm actually really excited about it. And I'm gonna cut it all the way down here and it will send up a, a new part. But I will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plants out of this one plant. So I'll be sharing with my friends. I'm gonna cut this great big long snake plant, this longest leaf that it has. And I'm gonna propagate some of that because sharing your plants with people is just so fun. But house plants, if, you, if you've never tried house plants, try some ones that are really easy. Um, a snake plant is very easy. A philodendrium is really easy. Actually, a lot of orchids are pretty easy to grow. So consider that it purifies your air. It makes you feel better in the winter time. It makes you feel better in the summertime. And the, the small things that with bugs or things like that, those are all fixable. And I think the benefits way outweigh the problems that you might have with a house plant. If you ever have problems, you have your county extension. Call the horticulturist, um, call a friend, call a master gardener. Um, there's lots of people that can help you with your plants. Now, as you know, I do the garden show every Tuesday and Thursday morning. And so um, I'd like you to subscribe, um, like my videos, share them with the world. Last video, I told you that I had a new Facebook page. It's called Suburban Homesteader y y w, sorry, WY for Wyoming. And I'm trying to build that. So I'm giving away this little guy, this little sheep. And so all you have to do is like my page and share it with two of your friends. And so that I appreciate. But I hope you liked your, the video on houseplants. It's, it's cold today. I think the high was like 
26 degree house plants it's it's cold today i think the high was like 26 degrees outside and it was a little windy and i was going to do something else but i'm gonna do that on thursday instead and i thought i need green i need house plants and i thought you might be having a snowstorm like i am and you need some green too so let's talk house plants so this is Sandy at Apple Cottage. I hope you have a great day. You enjoyed your, the video, had a cup of tea, and I will see you again on Thursday.